If you've watched these videos for any amount of time, I want to warn you that this one is going to be a bit different. Mostly because I can't, in good conscience, subject you to a single frame of this movie. If you do a search for the movie Chaos made in 2005, the results will bring you two films. The first film is a film starring Jason Statham that would not actually be released here in the States until 2008. This video is not about that film. The chaos we're looking at is the other 2005 film. This chaos is a disgusting, disturbing, ugly, despicable, nearly unwatchable piece of cinema. Its total runtime is 74 minutes, and I can tell you, my friends, that is 74 minutes too long. The film's plot is simple. Two girls go to a party in the woods, only to be abducted, raped, disfigured, and murdered in the most horrific ways with the attackers portrayed as the heroes of the film. That's it. There's no other plots to be found. The movie is set up for unrelenting violence that's neither cinematic nor entertaining. It's not even horrific, it's just disgusting. In Roger Ebert's review, he wrote that he regretted having seen Chaos. I know the feeling. I thought about turning the film off many times while watching it, but stuck it out because I think there's an important lesson here. To be completely fair to Chaos, we have to examine the state of horror in 2005. We've talked elsewhere on this channel about the genre known as torture porn, inspired by extreme Asian cinema and filmmakers like Takashi Miike. Eli Roth's Hostel was an early example of the genre, going so far as to use Miike as an actor in the film. But why does torture porn exist in the first place? As I've mentioned before on this channel, 1999 saw the release of M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense, which introduced studios to supernatural horror on the PG-13 level. These movies would pepper the horrorscape for several years, but the world would change in 2001. The attacks on the World Trade Center would change how horror films were made. When competing with the real, unthinkable horrors we saw in the news, supernatural horror just wouldn't scare us. The horror was all around us. Filmmakers like Eli Roth knew exactly where to pull from. Asian extreme horror was a genre full of gruesome special effects that seemed pulled from the dark underbelly of real life. By bringing these types of movies to America, filmmakers created escapism through over-the-top violence and gore, so it was this environment that Chaos was released in 2005. So what makes Chaos so much worse than a film like Hostel, which was also released in 2005? Well, in my opinion, Chaos takes its violence past the point of good taste. There's an art to a film like Hostel. It's still, at its core, a movie with editing and music and varied camera shots. The violence in Chaos isn't cut around. It's shown in single takes with only the screams of the victims to fill your eardrums. The screams made me incredibly uncomfortable. But it goes past the filmmaking elements. It also goes to what happens to these girls. Things I won't describe here. But I'll say what happens to the victims in Chaos goes well beyond what happens in a film like Hostel. While Hostel is mostly about the victims and their revenge on the people who would potentially hurt them, Chaos is about the bad guys. The victims are just there to be chewed up and spit out by the film. Most typical horror films follow a pretty easy formula. There's a character that's an audience stand-in, someone we can root for, a Laurie Strode or a Sidney Prescott. These characters normally make some dumb decisions, usually. For example, checking out a scary noise. But at the end of the film, they make all the right decisions and refuse to be a victim. Even Hostile follows this pattern. Chaos has no such character, no character to relate to. The victims don't fight back, they don't overcome. They are victims by the very definition of the word. They stand there and wait for the attackers to begin. So, who, I ask, are we supposed to relate to? The attackers? If so, that's a pretty sick thing to put your audience through, as the attackers do some pretty sick things. The film gives our victims plenty of ways to fight back, but they don't, and there's no hope throughout the film's overlong, nihilistic 74 minutes. I'll end with this. There are three films that make up the prologue to Roger's book, Your Movie Sucks. The other two we'll get to eventually, but Chaos is contained in the book's opening pages because Roger had a written back and forth with the makers of Chaos. In his review, Roger urges his readers to avoid seeing the film at all cost. He quotes other critics, such as Ed Gonzalez from Slant Magazine, who wrote, What's the point of this shit anyway? Roger writes, Having seen it, I can't ignore it, nor can I deny that it affected me strongly. 
I recoiled some of the most cruel moments, and when the film was over, I was filled with sadness and disquiet. Then the makers of the film ran an advertisement in Ebert's paper, the Chicago Sun-Times, to address his review. In their letter, they defend the film by writing that they were reflecting the ugliness of a post-9-11 world. They clutched their pearls that Ebert would use an expletive to describe their film. They said that leaving the audience sad and disquiet was the point. Roger then responded with a letter of his own, saying film can be ugly and nihilistic, just like chaos, but usually a filmmaker expresses those attitudes towards the villain of the film, writing, It is not enough to record it. What do you feel about it? Going on to say, If chaos has a message, it is that evil reigns and will triumph. I don't believe so. But Roger hits the nail on the head with his next paragraph, writing, Your real purpose in making chaos, I suspect, was not to educate, but to create a scandal that would draw an audience. There's always money to be made going further and being more shocking. Sometimes there's also art to be found in that direction, but not this time. This is one of those instances where what I want to say was already written by a man much smarter and much bolder than myself. By shooting their violence with a single lens with minimal sound, the makers of chaos cozy up to documentary territory, and that's where my disgust comes from. They have nothing to say but the world is violent. You can't leave your house, nor can you stay inside. There's bad people, and they'll find you either way. In the strange way the world works, the makers proved Roger Wright by using his words to promote the film, putting the most brutal movie ever made on the DVD box, and using Roger's words out of context to make it seem as though he liked it. He did not. I did not. If every copy of this film disappeared off the face of the planet, Earth would be a better place. Yes. This movie sucks.